Today's movie might set the record for most house establishing shots ever. Oh, and it has John Michael Thor in it. Wins across the board today, kids. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling John Fasano's absolutely bonkers rock and roll nightmare. Released in 1987, this is basically a vanity project for John Michael Thor. Thor wrote, starred in, and wrote the music for this masterpiece. I mean, this one has it all. Terrible music, what might be a record number of house establishing shots, endless padding, lots of flexing, and tons of rubber monsters. I give Thor a lot of crap in this one, but you're gonna be a fan by the time this video is over. This movie is magic. But enough about that. Can Thor and his bandmates kill enough demons to earn a coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Jerry McSendy, Craig, who's clearly too cool for a last name, and Paul Coy. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. Seriously, every little bit helps keep this show rolling. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on, you guessed it, a house establishing shot. I sure hope your liver is ready. Ooh, and a second angle. This movie is entirely made up of house establishing shots. Inside, someone's cooking. And I think we had the exact same stove growing up. Same puke avocado green, even. Upstairs, I sure hope Dad remembered to set the clocks because it's apparently daylight shavings time. Sure hope he's gonna get that creeper stash while he's here. Probably not, though. That thing really grew on him. Discount Ali Sheedy here is basically wishing she was back in detention with the Breakfast Club. You know, we should really reestablish that house, even though we've been in the house the whole time. Back inside, things are looking pretty excellent. But she apparently needed more cheese, so she runs to the fridge and finds... Gozer? Dad goes to investigate, but no one's there. Damn, guess she went out for a pack of smokes. Oh well, it would be a shame to waste these eggs. But before he can chow down, he realizes she left the oven on. Well done. I've heard of a bun in the oven, but this seems ridiculous. And house establishing shot. That's like five in the first two minutes. I don't know if they can keep this pace up. Apparently this cameraman is like two feet tall. I'm getting Puppet Master flashbacks. All this just so we can find the title card, apparently. Wait a minute, Edge of Hell? I was promised Rock and Roll Nightmare. Fun fact, Edge of Hell was the original pretentious title of this film, but the distributors felt Rock and Roll Nightmare would do better at the video store. Oh yeah, another pretty low effort title card too. I mean, points for the font, but we're deducting points for the white on black. Starring John Michael Thor. <laughs> I'd like to buy a vowel and a consonant, Pat. Introducing Jesse D'Angelo. He'd go on to appear in Zombie Nightmare and Black Roses. I'm sensing a theme here. Special appearance by Rusty Hamilton, who is John Michael Thor's wife. It's like Rob and Cherry Moon Zombie. Music by the Tritons, which was another John Michael Thor project. Dune really was basically Rob Zombie before Rob Zombie. Jesus, this is the worst first person shooter ever. It's like they filmed this in Roomba Vision. Produced by John Michael Thor. Screenplay by John Michael Thor. How many more credits can this dude get? Maybe he did craft services or worked as best boy grip. He's like Canadian Joe D'Amato. Directed by John Fasano. Fasano actually wrote some notable films, including another 48 hours. I guess we're done with the credits, because now we're about to hit the road. Literally. I feel like we might have actually needed an establishing shot before making this cut. Oh yeah, sweet conversion van. If this thing doesn't have a Frazetta mural on the side, I'm starting a riot. Fun fact, the original cut of this movie was like 10 minutes too short, so they padded it by adding all this pointless driving. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Or maybe it's just Lita Ford. I can't tell yet. At any rate, this is definitely a van with a if this van's a rockin' sticker on it somewhere. And I wasn't kidding about the padding because he holds this shot of nothing for a literal 30 seconds. <laughs> well played, guys. Clearly, we're just gonna ride along with John Michael as he goes to pick up his trend and hit band practice in real time. Jesus, this is like another 30 second shot of a van on a road. This is just egregious padding at this point. And some random tree shots with a house. I'm not sure this is a house establishing shot. Feels more like padding. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to leave too. Unfortunately, it just leads to this house establishing shot. This house should have gotten top billing over JMT, honestly. Christ, more driving. I guess the dramatic tension of this movie is basically, will John Michael Thor ever arrive on set? And a house establishing shot from a new angle. Back to the van. Screw the Tritons, JMT should have called his group Van Halen. 
house. I swear to God, this is the actual movie and not Jay editing it just to make a joke. Then, now if my hunch plays out, we're gonna go back to the house next. Hmm, it's a door. I guess this counts. It's also probably less wooden than JMT. Yeah, there it is. This movie is a gift. And Van. But it's at the house, ready to form shitty movie Voltron. Hey, check out those pipes. I thought JMT was a bodybuilder. Has he been skipping leg day? Anyway, they're here to record a new album. And I have no idea what kind of album because JMT looks like a hair metal god, but this guy on the right totally wandered in from some ska band. Oh yeah, this band is a mess. JMT, Ska Guy, New Wave Chick in the Blue Dress, and the guy in the army jacket is probably in Creed or Nickelback. You could say this is a real motley crew. Oh god, we've got Sid Vicious too! Hey, really mate? What are we supposed to do here? Then JMT delivers some exposition. We've got a month to come up with 10 minutes of new good material. Look, I'm guessing a month won't be nearly enough time for these guys to come up with 10 minutes of good music. You can probably give them a decade and they miss the mark by at least 9 minutes. And I guess the Toronto Tourism Board paid to get a promo here. But why Canada? Because Toronto's where it's happening, man. The music, the film industry, the arts. Yeah, it's just like Hollywood North. Then we meet their new roadie, Paul. Who <laughs> looks like an off-cycle Tom Savini. <laughs> Let's watch these two ad-lib a scene. Yeah, yeah the big barn there. Yeah, you know, um, that recording company, uh, RCSA, -A, right? Yeah, just two master thespians putting on a clinic. Hey, is that Uncle Joey from Full House? Cut it out. Get out of here. Everyone then heads inside, and we know that because this is like another 30 second take of nothingness. Inside, JMT's like, hey, where's the squat rack? We need to do some curls. With everyone present, it's time for another bad acting showdown. What about Stiggy and I? Rod and I are actually married. Get a load of the child bride. This movie was clearly snubbed by Academy voters who just weren't ready to acknowledge that Toronto is a cultural mecca churning out product on par with Hollywood. JMT heads out to get the gear, but gets distracted by a stiff breeze. I wonder if there's beer on the sun. Wait, wrong movie. Hey, JM, the movie's in here. Thrill as he actually locks the van. Dude is a master of locking. Why is any of this in the actual movie? And more padding. I've seen trading bras with less padding than this movie. Great, I get it. We've established the house, the van, and the trees. And the clouds. And the house again. I might have to suspend the house establishing shot drinking game because none of you are going to survive this video at the current pace. Back inside, the evil Roomba is on the prowl. Dirt doesn't stand a chance. So, yeah, this one time I was pounding out reps on bench and... He kinda looks like David Lee Roth in drag, which might be redundant. These guys are clearly playing the house establishing shot drinking game. JMT's like, yeah babe, I'm working on my six pack. I don't say this, everything's about the rocker lifestyle with JMT. Even doing the dishes. Let's rock and roll! Yeah. This seems like as good a time as any for another house establishing shot. Man, that David Lee Roth joke was basically on the money. Jacket courtesy of Siegfried and Roy. Like, what the hell even is this movie at this point? JMT vamping around between establishing shots so far. Hmm, we were inside, so we'd better reestablish this house again. Might as well get the barn while we're here too. I mean, this movie has to get over the 80 minute mark somehow and the threadbare script isn't gonna pull its weight. Inside, band practice is underway. This is basically what you'd get if Prince was white, and Canadian, and talentless. I mean, just listen to these lyrics. You get the feeling that JMT is basically always talking about rock, or bench day. Let's ask Ian Sarah what he thinks of the Tritons. It stinks. Fun fact, this is the biggest show the Tritons ever played. Look, I love to rock as much as the next guy, but I can't rock around the clock. I need my sleep. Even I can't believe it's not Valerie Bertinelli is unimpressed. You can even remember Valerie Bertinelli? Christ, I'm old. Um, I'm no musician, but I think this version sounds better. Meanwhile, this dude's beating on some skins. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, he's playing the drums. This song basically is five minutes long and has like one line of lyrics. Jesus, look at the dork in the booth. 
I haven't seen a red light special like this since TLC's heyday. But wait, it's gonna get weirder because we've got a one-eyed willy. Hell yeah. No, well, yeah, maybe. I mean, what the hell is this thing? It looks very phallic from here. He clearly feels the same way about the music as I do. <laughs> I'd have loved to have been at the pitch meeting for this movie. JMT's like, we go out to rock, and we perform our smash hit, we live to rock, and there are tiny penis puppets running around. It'll be huge. Thank you, Detroit, and good night. There'll be no encore. Why does it feel like this entire movie was shot out of focus? Down in the basement, I can't believe it's not Valerie Bertinelli makes her move. You appreciate the finer things in life. You know what appeals to a woman. Um, I am 1000% certain Uncle Joey here has no clue what appeals to a woman who isn't made of rubber. You know what makes a woman hot. Matches? Down comforters? The heat set at 90? Uncle Joey's about to show her his full house. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. You're on a roll today, Danny. I don't know, does the manager ever steal the drummer's chick? I mean, the bass player's chick, sure. But the drummer's? Oh, now it all makes sense. She's got bitter beer face. I mean, say what you will, but this broad is definitely getting a little long in the tooth. And she gives him the mother of all hickeys. This definitely sucks, but at least his friends came to look for him. Well, it sounded like the scream came from down here. You're right, let's go upstairs. Yeah, sure. We heard the noise down here, but let's go upstairs. Totally makes sense. But before we get there, let's just stop for this random shot of nothing. Back upstairs, JMT is like, this definitely does not rock. House establishing shot. Looks a tit nipply in here tonight, too. Then this happens. Don't be too long, honey. Your singing's brought out the beast in me. <laughs> With her gone, JMT's like, thank God, I can finally work on my Chippendales audition in private. Turns out he's really just here to fondle his stick. Hell yeah. No, not like that. I meant these drumsticks. You know what time it is. House establishing shot time. Really, please stop drinking. Inside, JMT and his lady are apparently sleeping in a coffin built for two. Hey babe, did I ever tell you about my band The Hinges? We open for the doors. Over in another room, these two are about to duet. I have seen a lot of P-Hub videos start exactly like this. Oh yeah, definitely P-Hub, because this is a very blue movie. Hello, Mr. Ebert. Somewhere, Gene Siskel has given this scene two thumbs down. Bold choice to not even like this scene. Back in room A, she's so dull she put the dude to sleep before the hookup. If I just keep my eyes closed, maybe she'll stop talking. Wait a minute, JMT let someone else flex in this movie? But that's interrupted when this chick shows up. Who the hell is this? Hold up, it's a reptilian. I knew those guys were real. Probably running the government. By God, the reptilian is locked in the claw. My JR is getting better, right? Right? Well, you think about how good my JR has gotten, let's kill some more runtime with yet another house establishing shot. Oh good, here comes a new car. Maybe we can get some light into some of these scenes. Oh sweet, the Go-Go's are here. This is probably the inspiration for Vacation. Turns out these are Triton's groupies, which is literally the least believable thing in this movie so far. Um, is John Michael Thor ripping off tubular bells here? Sure sounds like it. They're gonna have to sneak into the house, which is no big deal because their lips are sealed. Can I cram more Go-Go's jokes into this video? We'll find out. Panning house establishing shot. Inside, this guy clearly didn't use palm olive. Check out those dishpan hands. But hey, at least he shut off the terrible music. Barn establishing shot. Jesus, he really does look like Lita Ford on the juice. Oh boy, it's time to kill another three minutes with a terrible song. They really should have named this band Poison, because this music is killing me. This one sounds like he's channeling his inner Aussie. I'm starting to suspect JMT only created this movie so he could fund a few music videos for his band. Mosh Pit is rockin'. Wait a minute, is this a love ballad about steroids? Oh yeah, definitely a power ballad about Winstrol. I don't know, this karaoke Van Halen cover band is awful, but they're having fun. I mean, JMT is at least slightly more believable as a rock star than Hulk Hogan was in Real American. With practice over, his lady wants to hook up, but he's like, I need to go do some curls for the girls. House establishing shot. Oh look, these two are walking out of this movie. Wait, take me with you. They're just gonna do it out here by the lake. Um, is that a xenomorph popping out of your chest, or are you just happy to see me? Dude's gonna be extra handsy now. 
Iron Man might improve his drumming, though. House establishing shot. Upstairs, JMT is like, honey, have you seen my clambuterol? She's like, it's right behind your blue sequin silk blouse, babe. Honestly, I think my grandmother had the same shirt. He just wants to work, but she wants to work on a love ballad. I wonder how weird it is to do a sex scene in a movie where your wife is in the cast, but not your love interest. And now she's all wet. Hell yeah. Um, I meant because she's in the shower, but yeah. I guess Linnea Quigley was busy. Oh god, gross tongue play. No way I'm showing that. Hey, remember that kid from the start of the movie? Well, he's still in this movie. And he's a dirty peeper, apparently. But before that can go anywhere, we need another house establishing shot. This has to be a record. The kid runs out to the barn and years of Metal Gear Solid are finally about to pay off. Unfortunately, Barry Manilow here spots him. But surprise, he's a little monster. And I don't just mean an ornery kid. It's nice to see Hervé Villachez still getting work after Fantasy Island. He's still morphing. And say this is a face only a mother could love, but well, his mom's already dead. And house establishing shot. We have established the shit out of this house at this point. And now, a nighttime house establishing shot. Kill me now. I'm gonna have PTSD every time I see a house for at least the next year. Finally realizing that his music career is DOA, JMT finds a new job washing dishes. Ah, oh, look, someone left a boggling in the fridge. Upstairs, Lady Macbeth is still trying to get that damn spot out. Too bad she catches us peeping on her. Oh, you scared me. Well, that would be the first scary thing in this entire movie. I mean, other than JMT's outfits. Out in the barn, I think JMT is writing the soundtrack in real time. And One-Eyed Willie is back. $20 says PrudeTube tries to demonetize me over this thing. I don't even know what the hell this is supposed to be or what any of these things have to do with this movie. Anyway, JMT's work is interrupted when his girlfriend shows up to tell us what we already know. We have to stop pretending. The guys won't be coming back. He's not buying it, but maybe these special effects will help. God, she looks like a toe. I mean, Jesus, this thing is stiffer than a virgin in a strip club. And these guys are back. JMT seems pretty unconcerned by all of this. Ah, uh, you've killed no one, bub. What? Or is it less familiar to call you Beelzebub? Now it's gonna get meta. The others, your band, your groupies. Never here, bub. Merely shadows I created to entertain your little friends. Prince Hendrickson, care to weigh in? That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and now it's morphin' time! You know, JMT was waiting all movie for the scene. It's like a discount Ultimate Warrior. Or maybe Adrian Street with slightly less makeup. Look, I admire any man who has the courage to wear a cape and a spiked speedo. I think I just found my Halloween costume. <laughs> I don't even have words for this. I mean, be calling it the worst WrestleMania main event ever. God bless you, John Michael Thor. I mean, how did this man not get an Oscar? Acting face. And now he's covered in goo. Hell yeah. No, not like that. Actual goo. Not gonna lie, I'm not sure if they're fighting or if this is foreplay. This is my pooping face. And now JMT is doling out pimp fists like it's the first of the month. Seriously, guys, this is the most amazing thing ever. Stop pummeling me. I just came here for band merch. And now JMT is setting him up for the choke slam. It's also apparently the 4th of July, which is no weirder than anything else that's happened in the past 10 minutes. I'll see you again, old scratch. Guys, I can't even. Best movie ever. Hey, suck in your gut, JMT. That was so exciting, we apparently died and ended up in this cemetery. I have some grave concerns about where this is headed. Clearly, they spent all the budget on the puppets and couldn't afford to light this scene. Which leads us not to a swerve ending, but a new house establishing shot. And cue credits. Wait a minute, what happened to the caretaker dude and the groupie chicks? What the hell movie? So, what have we learned from Rock and Roll Nightmare? Well, a lot of things. Like for starters, that John Michael Thor was a real renaissance man. Actor, bodybuilder, writer, rock star, and all-around talent. I've seen this movie like 10 times in my life and I still have no idea what it's about, but I'll be damned if it's not amazing. But enough about that. Can John Michael Thor deliver enough splatter to earn the coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, this one is hard to judge. We're treated to a fist bursting through a chest, lots of slime, monster makeup effects, and some hilariously dated but still cool looking puppets. Rock and Roll Nightmare isn't particularly bloody, which is why I'm only going to give it a two barf bag rating, but if you argued for a better score, I'd probably cave. 
This one isn't a sick flick, but it is incredible. Looking for another movie with rubber monsters and plenty of splatter? Then be sure to check out my review of Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer. You'll find the link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.